All right, this podcast is arguably the most important one in this chapter because it deals with all of the important vocabulary that is required to be mastered to survive this chapter. This podcast number seven, you have to know this vocabulary. And it's this vocabulary is going to become much of your vocab quiz that you need to be taking online. So make sure that you look at this podcast two or three, maybe four times before you take your chapter test. All right, let's dig into this one. Mendel uh, studied the traits of a pea plant. So what is a, a trait? This is a characteristic of an organism. Uh, one, for example, the flowers would be white or the flowers would be pink or purple. Those are a trait. Traits are caused by genes. And remember, one gene equals one protein. So the gene codes for the trait. The trait is therefore a protein. So if you go back to this flower color, you know, you had the, the, the white flowers and you had the pink ones or the purple ones. There is a gene for white, creates a protein that causes the white color. And then there's a gene for purple, which would cause the purple color. Now, alleles typically come in different forms. And these genes are called, or these different forms are called alleles. So in green here, you can see that the book definition of an allele is an alternative form of a gene. And a great way to remember this one, you see this AL here and that AL there, allele alternative. Now what this means in plain English, you can see here in this example, we have a trait, which is the height of a pea plant. The gene for height comes in two forms, a tall form and a short form. Now you notice this capital letter T, this means that tall is the dominant allele and short, which is this little t, is the recessive allele. And we're going to get to that information here in a little, a little bit. Now, because peas are like humans and they are created through sexual reproduction, alleles come in pairs. You get one from dad and you get one from mom. All right? So the alleles always come in pairs, one from mother one from dad. So you have a paternal allele and you have a maternal allele. All right. Another set of words we need to know are the zygous words. And these are homozygous and then we're going to have heterozygous. Now if you can remember, homozygous means the same. So a homozygous uh, simply means both parents gave you the same allele. See this homo and same? Now we would write this using letters big T, big T, or little t, little t. So in other words, one parent gave you the tall allele, the other parent gave you the same allele, and of course the same thing happened over here in short. Heterozygous is just the opposite. Remember, hetero means different, so this would mean that you get different alleles. So one parent gave the tall allele, the other parent gave the short allele. Now, these are adjectives. These are ways to describe an individual. So this plant right here is homozygous tall. It is homozygous for that trait. Both parents gave the same allele. Right? This individual we would describe as heterozygous. And that tells you that one parent gave the dominant allele, the other parent gave the short allele. Now, when it comes to heterozygous and homozygous, now is when we can use the words dominant and recessive. Now, the definition for dominant is this allele is always expressed if present. Now, expressed means you go through transcription and translation. This protein will be produced. So it doesn't matter what the other allele is, that dominant allele will always go through transcription and translation. In other words, it will be expressed. All right? So as we can see here, this individual here is homozygous dominant. Both parents gave the same allele. This individual is heterozygous. Now, we do not say heterozygous dominant because that is simply being redundant. The moment I said heterozygous, that told me that I had at least one of these alleles. Now, recessive means you can only be expressed. And remember, expressed means that you go through transcription and translation, and that protein is made. The recessive allele will only be transcribed if it's homozygous. So you have to be homozygous recessive to show the recessive trait. So as you can see here, when you're homozygous recessive, both parents gave you the recessive allele, that plant will be short. All right, we have a whole bunch of stuff in color right here. That means they're important. You must know this stuff. If you do not understand what these 
four vocabulary words mean, you need to make sure you see your teacher and get some extra help because these you have to have 100% mastery of this slide. All right, genotype and phenotype are our next pair of vocabulary words. Genotype, basically the word itself is telling you what it means. All right, let me back up here a little bit. Actually, we'll just do this. There we go. All right, geno refers to gene. And then type just means type. So if you think of this, this is just the type of genes that you have. So when we want to talk about genotypes, we're going to be using these words recessive and dominant, and we're going to use homozygous and heterozygous. Or we can just use the letters. These are all genotype things. We're telling you what alleles this organism has. So if the individual is homozygous dominant, like this right here, We've just described that individual's genotype. In other words, the type of genes that they have. Remember, this one's heterozygous. We do not say heterozygous dominant. That is simply redundant. The moment you say heterozygous, you've already told that we have that. And obviously, homozygous recessive. All right, now, phenotype means the physical expression of the genotype. You see this pH right here? And this pH and phenotype? That's a way that I use to remember that phenotype means the physical expression of the genotype. Now, the stuff in black right here, that's the book definition. Here's what it means in plain English. It's what the organism looks like. Now, remember, the phenotype is determined by the genotype. In other words, what you look like is determined by your genes. So if you see right here, this individual's genotype is homozygous tall. Its phenotype would be tall. In other words, if you have these genes, you look tall. The phenotype of this individual, it's heterozygous, would be tall. And then obviously, the phenotype of an individual that's homozygous recessive in this case, that would be short. All right. Once again, this is another slide that you must have 100% mastery on. If you don't understand these two concepts, make sure you see your teacher to get some extra help. All right. True breeding, also known as purebred. So purebred, true bred, they mean the same thing. This means that the organism's genotype is homozygous. So if we said that you were homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive, that means you're a purebred organism or a, or a true breeding individual. And what this means is that when this individual produces gametes, they will always have the same allele. All right, so let me see this example here. All right. We got the individual that's homozygous dominant. So there's a mother cell. And let's say that this is a guy, and it's going to go through meiosis, and it's going to make sperm cells. I just like drawing the little tails. That's why I always pick sperm cells. All right. Half of the sperm cells are going to get this big T. The other half are going to get this big T. Notice it doesn't matter which gamete you get. It's always going to get the same allele. This individual will breed true, in other words, always give the tall allele to the offspring. That's what pure breed and true bred means. Well, what if you're heterozygous? If you're heterozygous, you are called a hybrid. Hybrid, heterozygous, those words mean the same thing. So as you see over here, this individual will not breed true when producing gametes. All right, so we got this heterozygous individual over here, and we're just going to say it's going to make sperm cells again. It's going to go through meiosis. Half the sperm cells are going to get the big T, and the other half are going to get the little T. You don't know which one you're going to get. It's a 50-50 chance. So this individual will not always breed true to its phenotype. This is a tall plant but it can pass on the gene for short. It is not a purebred, it is a hybrid, right? The organism's gametes can get either allele. Okay, once again, very important words you need to make sure that you know. All right, now let's put all this together. All right, this kind of sums up what we've covered in this podcast. All right, we have a trait, and remember we're talking about Mendel's peas. The trait is for height. In this case, there's only two types of height. Now, this doesn't work for humans. If this was working for humans, there would be like a six-foot-tall humans and there would be three-foot-tall humans. That's it. You'd come in those two flavors. All right? The tall is the dominant allele. 
If you only have one of these alleles from one of your parents, you're going to be tall. Short is recessive. Remember, recessive means you can only be expressed if you are homozygous for that trait. Okay, remember, homozygous means both traits are the same. Heterozygous, the alleles are different. All right, so here we got big T, big T. That is describing the genotype. If you want to sound smarter, instead of saying big T, big T, use these fancy words, homozygous dominant. Now, if you have this genotype, you're going to be tall. That's your phenotype. In other words, that's what you look like. If you're heterozygous, which means big T, little t, you're also going to be tall because the tall allele is dominant over the short allele. Little t, little t is homozygous recessive. So if we say little t, little t, and we say homozygous recessive, we have just described the genotype of that plant. If you're homozygous recessive, you will be short. Remember, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, these are true breeding or purebreds. It doesn't matter. This individual's all of its gametes are going to get a big T, and in this individual, every gamete that it produces will get a little t. Heterozygous is a hybrid. You're not sure which allele you're going to get in your gametes. Half of them are going to get a big T. The other half are going to get a little t. Okay, just want to remind you, podcast number seven is really, really important. You must know this vocabulary perfectly to do well in this chapter. If you need to go over this podcast three, four, five times, do it. If you still have trouble, do not hesitate to get help with your teacher when you get into class tomorrow. All right, don't forget, very important podcast. Make sure you review.